I've been doing this video series where I make a championship case for every NASCAR playoff driver for five years now. This one may be the most difficult one yet. We're going to do it. Harrison Burton won this past Sunday, or Saturday technically, at Daytona to lock himself into the NASCAR playoffs. It was the historic, the iconic Wood Brothers 100th win, Harrison Burton's first career win, and now he's in the playoffs, so we're going to give him a championship case. If you've missed the first, I guess, 12 that we've done so far, there's a playlist. You can go check it out. We've done Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Tyler Reddick, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, and so on. Anyone who's locked into the playoffs. So we're going to do Harrison Burton, and then we'll do three more next week. Quick little video, or not just video, channel update. The NASCAR schedule is anticipated to come out tomorrow, so I'm going to pre-record a video on what the schedule is reported to be by Jordan Bianchi, and then I will release it tomorrow once the actual schedule comes out. I will be traveling to Darlington tomorrow, so that's why I will not have a true fresh video up to live react, I guess. So, yes, that's for tomorrow. But as for today, Harrison Burton, one win on the season, as I said, at Daytona, one top five, two top tens, 13 laps led on the year. He has five playoff points. I make this point for everyone. Get as many playoff points as you can. Harrison Burton, you don't have a lot of opportunities left, but if you got an opportunity at stage one at Darlington, go for it. If you got an opportunity to shock the world again, win at Darlington. But the playoff schedule goes like this. Atlanta, Watkins Glen, Bristol. That's the first round. And the big thing for Harrison Burton is that if he was going to make the playoffs and wants a chance to advance, this would be the year to do it. This year's playoff schedule is more wild card than ever. We got two super speedways, two road courses. So four out of the first six races in the playoffs are wild card races. And we kick it off at Atlanta, where he has a top 10 in July of 2022. And in fact, finished 11th there in the spring. So Harrison Burton's got a great chance to once again do what he did at Daytona and not only just put together a competitive finish, but win. Yes, you may be saying I'm crazy to say Harrison Burton can win twice from 34th in the standings. Well, technically at this point, he'll be at worst 16th in the standings. But to go out and shock the world again. But Harrison Burton's a decent super speedway racer. We know how good Penske is at the super speedways with Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, Austin Sendrick. And the Wood Brothers, with that connection to Team Penske, they might bring a little bit something extra. So they've got a great opportunity to once again shock the world. Then we go to Watkins Glen. And Watkins Glen, small sample size, two finishes of 28th and 33rd. Yeah, um, Bristol. <laughs> Bristol, once again, a small sample size. But he does have a 16th back in September of 2022. So there's two avenues I'm going to take. Number one, win. Just win at Atlanta, you advance, no stress, no problem. Number two, and this is a stretch, but top 15, all three races. Other guys are going to have problems. Other guys are going to get caught up in wrecks. If you can just top 15, you have your five little bonus points with you, you might be able to squeak through. Maybe get a top 10 in Atlanta just to be safe. But if you can somehow, someway, top 15, top 10, these first three races, you actually might get through. Or you can just win at Atlanta. So let's say he does it. Let's say he gets a, a ninth at Atlanta, a 13th at Watkins Glen, and a 15th at Bristol. And Harrison Burton, the 16 seed or whatever seed, he, he, may, he may be the 13. Because if someone points their way in, they might not have as many playoff points. I'm getting distracted. The, the guy who was 34th in points suddenly into the second round of the playoffs. Well, Talladega, Kansas, Charlotte Roble. So we lead off at Kansas, and I will say, not, not the greatest numbers, a little bit of a bigger sample size. Five starts in the best finish of 21st. But Ford did run well there in the spring. Chris Buescher was competitive. Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano, they've been competitive at this track before. Once again, if Wood Brothers, Team Penske, bring a little something extra, maybe. Maybe Harrison Burton can get a competitive result. Same situation for Talladega that I'm going to say for Atlanta. He's got a shot at winning this thing. He finished 10th here in the spring, so he does have a top 10 at this track. Other than that, his results are all over the place. He led 11 laps in the spring of 2023. So Harrison Burton has run competitively at Talladega. And as I said, at the super speedways, maybe they can shock the world again. <laughs> a third time Harrison Burton 
wins at Talladega. But maybe go for a top five this time because the points cushion is going to be tighter. You don't have as many playoff points, and I personally don't anticipate Harrison Burton getting many more playoff points unless, of course, as I said, he wins Atlanta. And then we go to the cutoff at the Charlotte Roval. Once again, small sample size, the 24th and 28th. Um, he did finish second in stage two, I do have to say, in 2022. What's it going to take for Harrison Burton this round? First round, I said get a top 15 every race, maybe a top 10 at the Super Speedway. I'm going to say get a top 15 at Kansas, a top 5 at Talladega, and a top 13, maybe a top 12 at the Roval. These are all estimates. There is no hard science to these guesses, but... I'm going to say if you can get a top five at Talladega, get yourself a good chunk of stage points, rely on other guys having problems like, you know, maybe someone with not a lot of playoff points gets in a crash or something. Someone like an Alex Bowman, if he's advanced, a Daniel Suarez, an Austin Sendrick, you just got to outpoint those guys. You're even with them on points heading in. Maybe they outperform you by six or seven at Kansas, but if you can outperform them by 20 to 25 at Talladega, all of a sudden, you've built yourself a little buffer, and you can afford maybe a not-so-great result at the Roval. But I'm going to say, let's go for a top 15 at Kansas, a top 5 at Talladega with some stage points in the top 20, top 15. Let's go top 15 at the Roval, and Harrison Burton could be the most shocking playoff run of all time. Then we get to this round of eight. Yeah, he doesn't have a super speedway to, to back on here. Um, or lean on, I should say. We got Las Vegas, Homestead, and Martinsville. So for Vegas and Miami and Mar I will say Martinsville's a little bit better. Homestead or Vegas' is best finish is 16th in the spring of 2022. He did qualify 8th in October of 2022. And Homestead, 36th and a 20th, but it, the 36th was a DNF due to a mechanical failure. And then Martinsville is actually a little bit better, I will say. You got to remember, Ford is much better at the short tracks, the flat tracks. We saw how Team Penske's done at North Wilkesboro, at Iowa, at New Hampshire. Maybe, let's say Cindric's eliminated, Logano's eliminated. So it's just Burton and Blaney left, and all the Penske notes, data, money is going to those two cars. Maybe Harrison Burton at this point, they've hit they've hit their stride. They're on a hot streak, and now they got more funding, more data. They know what they're doing now. Maybe he can run a little bit more competitive. But the fact of the matter is, in this round at this point, even if Harrison Burton wins at Atlanta and Talladega and has 15 playoff points, it's going to be a must win. He's going to be in a tight point situation, and I, I'm just going to be honest. I don't see him outperforming Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, William Byron, Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Martin Truex Jr., Tyler Reddick. He's not going to straight up outperform those guys for three races, but it's going to take a win. It's going to take either some strategy. It's going to take a very well-timed caution or as i said maybe they find something and martinsville's their best shot he's gotten 11th there in the fall of 2022 started 10th finished 11th um it's going to take a must win and if he's able to win we go to another short flat track at phoenix which ford is really good at team penske's won the last two championships there if he gets there anything can happen the top three can wreck out once again you know if you can get there if you can shock the world and get there you never know, but in conclusion, Harrison Burton's championship case looks like this. Round one, probably going to need a win at Atlanta, but maybe if you can put together three top 15s, you can survive. Second round, a little bit more difficult. Probably going to need a top five at Talladega if you don't win. Top 15, those other two, and you might be able to squeak through. Round of eight, you got to win. Martinsville is your best shot, and if you get to Phoenix, who knows. But Harrison Burton championship case complete. Didn't think I'd be saying that. But if Harrison Burton actually pulls this off, wow, that would be impressive. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Next week, we will finish the 2024 series off with, I guess, whoever else makes it, whether it's Truex, Gibbs, Busher, Bubba, uh, Chastain, or if Todd Gilliland goes out and wins Darlington, we'll do something for Todd Gilliland. But as I said, we'll finish this series up next week. Darlington, the Southern 500, the playoff cutoff line. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to being there, giving you guys some of the looks, I guess, of being there. But anyways, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.